Hey guys, this is SideQuest, and Xbox has been getting a lot of hate recently because of its lackluster first party lineup, with Sea of Thieves launching earlier this year to very lukewarm to negative reviews and State of Decay 2 releasing to an unimpressive meta score and reports of disappointing performance. All of this paired with a dry 2017 year in which only three major Xbox One exclusives released and its much lower install base than its competition makes the console seem very undesirable to many, who opted to get a PlayStation 4 or a Nintendo Switch instead. But I feel that Xbox's negatives are getting overblown, in the sense that that is all everyone talks about, only the negatives, which although are valid and absolutely detrimental to the system, don't represent the full story. I personally don't regret owning an Xbox One, because it is a console with great pro-consumer features and some amazing games. So this episode of SideQuest is essentially a look at the positives the Xbox One has to offer and why I think it's such a great system. So let's start with the games, which may have many of you rolling your eyes thinking, Xbox has no worthwhile games which I actually very much disagree with, as there are so many worthwhile games Xbox has that are spectacular experiences in their own right. Look at Forza Horizon 3, a masterclass in the racing genre and some of the most fun I've had this entire generation. Cuphead, a tough as nails run and gun boss rush title teetering on the edge of perfection. Ori in the Blind Forest, a beautiful platformer with amazingly tight gameplay and a touching narrative. Sunset Overdrive, an over-the-top third-person shooter made by the people behind Ratchet & Clank, which is just so much fun to play and experience. Even the exclusives that weren't perfect had redeeming qualities to them, like how Gears 4 and Halo 5 had pretty lackluster story modes, but really great multiplayer experiences. Yes, there were duds like ReCor and Sea of Thieves, but those aren't the rule, as demonstrated by the great exclusives already available on the platform for you to play right now. And let's not just stop with now. Below, Ashen, Forza Horizon 4, and Ori and the Will of the Wisps look like very promising games coming exclusively to the platform that look like great experiences I can't wait to play. We also shouldn't forget about the myriad of services that the system offers, with the two biggest ones being Game Pass and Backwards Compatibility. Both of these services are amazing and add value to the system. Backwards Compatibility allows you to play Xbox 360 and even original Xbox titles, so you can re-experience those classics without having to boot up your original systems. I got to play through the phenomenal first Mass Effect through this service, and I'm planning on going through GTA 4, Red Dead Redemption, Vanquish, and Dead Space 2 later on this year. And yeah, you can make the argument that old games aren't relevant anymore, you just want to play new games, which is definitely valid. However, having the service in place doesn't hurt anybody and only adds to the value of the console you're playing on. It's an option for you to enjoy, much like Game Pass, which is another great service in and of itself. Being able to instantly access a library of games with just one flat fee is awesome, especially when you're bored and have nothing to play. With the icing on top of being able to play all of the newest first party exclusives the day they release. This is a very pro-consumer move and is a feature that only benefits the gamers, which can be said about basically every other service in place on the system. I also really like the controller the Xbox One provides, and the whole concept of Xbox Design Labs. I also really like how they put out a controller so that the disabled people can play games too. And I also really like the ecosystem of the Xbox with achievements, avatars, and UI all being great in my opinion. I'm also impressed with the Xbox One X the most powerful console ever made at this point in time that also happens to be the smallest Xbox console ever made, which can output some games at native 4K. It's a very well designed console, alongside the Xbox One S, and although that power is mismanaged by Xbox First Party, it's still impressive to see that they actually achieved what they did. It's honestly kind of crazy, because when you look at it, other than the first party lineup, there isn't that much the competition does better than Xbox. The Nintendo Switch is lacking basic features and third party support and still suffers from major droughts, 
and the PS4 doesn't have that much in terms of services or pro-consumer practices like Xbox does. Now, I know you guys are probably thinking I'm a fanboy after hearing me praise the Xbox for this entire episode, but I'm not one. I own a PS4, where I think the exclusive library as a whole is superior, and I 100% acknowledge that Xbox's exclusive lineup is in a state of decay. However, the negativity is overshadowing all the good that the console is doing with its great past exclusives, services, and ecosystem. It's far from a perfect console and doesn't live up to the Xbox 360 before it, but I still find myself putting a lot of time into it and playing the majority of multi-platform games on it. The Xbox One is a great system that was definitely turned around after that horrendous reveal, and I'm not afraid to praise it for what it does right, which is plentiful if you just stop and try to enjoy it.